Welcome back to Southern RV TV. I'm your host, Barry, and today we're coming at you from the Southern RV sales lot to check out a great product from Venture RV. This is the Sonic Light 169 VUD. This is a bunkhouse camper, so it's built with family in mind. It weighs under 3,400 pounds dry, so it's super light, single axle. It's got a lot of cool features, and we're gonna check them out. So buckle up and let's just get right into it. Let's get started right here at the front cap. One of the things that I want to mention is that Venture does the Sonic and the Sonic Light. We're looking at a Sonic Light. What differentiates the two? Well, the Sonic Lights only have one propane tank and they're single axle. That's about the biggest difference between them other than some floor plan changes. Having that single propane tank is not a big deal. It's grill sized. It means instead of refilling it, you can simply swap it out if you need to. We have a power tongue jack up here to make hitching and unhitching from the tow vehicle simple and easy. This is one feature that I really like about the Sonic Likes that we don't see that often on small travel trailers and it's a battery cutoff switch. That's really handy for when you're putting your RV into storage at the beginning or end of the season and you just wanna make sure that nothing's on, right? So you flip that switch, you're not draining the battery in any way, form, or fashion. As you can see, this has that automotive grade front windshield here, and this front cap is fiberglass, but what's nifty about it is that this wraps from the front of the vehicle all the way to the back. So instead of having a rubber roof, the Sonic actually has a fiberglass roof, and that roof is technically the front cap and the rear cap. So it's one solid sheet that goes from front to back. There's no treatment necessary. And for as far as maintenance goes, all you're doing is checking your seams and seals and making sure those stay nice and tight. As we push around the corner, we come up to our pass-through storage. These have slam latches and magnetic catches, making them super simple and easy to use. That goes all the way through, and that's up under our bed inside. We also have solar prep here on the side. We can plug up a panel to essentially trickle charge the 12 volt system. We have a power awning. This extends out. It's a little bit windy today, so we don't have it out, uh, but it is lit up by a nice big LED light bar that hides tucked up along that rail. We have external speakers. They're marine grade, so you don't have to worry about them getting wet when it rains. And then also notice that this has the step above solid step entry as well. Nice big grab handle for getting in and out of the coach. On the back side, we have a four inch steel bumper. Now that can host a sewer, a sewer hose. We are prepped for our backup camera. That's actually a plug and play option that we can install after the fact. Our sa satellite and cable feeds in are right here at the rear of the camper. And then pushing around the corner, we have black tank flush, as well as an outside shower and our dump station. I really like the fact that they've put this outside shower right by the dump station. If there is any messes or anything, it's easy to clean up. This is a handy dandy feature that we see on a lot of travel trailers, and it's very useful for all sorts of different circumstances. The main shoreline power in is right there at the back of the slide. And then we have our primary city water in and tank fills up at the front, as well as access to that pass through storage again. Guys, let's pop up inside and see what's going on inside. Now that we've seen the exterior of the trailer, we're up in the inside, but let's talk a little bit about the construction. The floor that I'm standing on starts at the bottom of that steel frame with a, essentially a moisture barrier, and then that's gonna have a radiant foil barrier, and then we're gonna have a actual tongue and groove plywood that's down beneath me before we get to that linoleum. Sandwiched in there, we have some fiberglass insulation, 
And then that fiberglass insulation is also going to be used in the roof, the walls, and the front cap. Speaking of our front cap, that's the one place where we have exterior construction differences. So our roof is framed up and trussed with aluminum trusses. Our sidewalls are aluminum frames, but our front cap, because it's radius, it's harder for them to get that nice curve. So they use wood to frame up the front cap. So it's a combination of construction techniques to accomplish this here. And all of that, of course, is using that nice radiant foil barrier as well as that nice heavy insulation that we would find in a home. It's that fiberglass batten. You've seen it before. It's pretty commonly used. So as I step up right here inside the very front of the RV coming through this front door, on my left, as soon as I step up in, there's this hidden compartment that opens up. This houses our slide and awning switch, as well as a few light switches. And there's a nice little shelf up here too with plugs and USB ports. So if you wanted to hang up keys and hide your phone away, you have that option. To this side of me, we have what is essentially the main sleeping space as well as some of our primary storage in this vehicle. Now this bed is falls in a strange place. This is bigger than a full, but it's smaller than a queen. Now, me personally at six foot three, I've found that if I lay down on this, my head, see my head's already hitting the wall and my feet are off the end of it. So it's a little bit short. If I was sleeping on that side, I would have to be scrunched up because of the way that the uh, closet impacts the end of the bed, but I'm on the tall side, guys. I'm six foot three. Not everybody's up there with me. So this is something that you would consider for maybe shorter than six foot families. The closet itself has a hanging rod and just a little bit of shelf space down below. We have our RV Technologies Bluetooth head units just to the left of it. And then all of that is connected over here to where we can mount a flat screen TV. That's also connected to those exterior speakers as well as the speakers that are inside on the roof. So we get a nice bit of kind of surround sound feel. Up above the bed, they have these cargo net shelves and that's kind of nice because it's gonna keep your stuff in place. Underneath the bed, I'll lift up this side. You can see that we have access to that pass through storage that was accessible from outside. Pushing over to this side of the camper, we have our slide. The slide is out. This slide hosts our dinette table. And the dinette table can convert into another bed as well, simply by pulling it up off the post, dropping it down, and then we have a pad that can shift down in between it. One thing I like about what they've done here is for tall people and people with big feet, notice that there's a bit of a recess here so that we're not just colliding feet the entire time. If this was straight down, my feet would have to be forward of it, not leaving much room for anyone else in the family. Much like the bed behind me, this bed is not really suitable for an adult when it's dropped down. It's not quite long enough. It's really better for kids. Now, the kitchen in this unit is pretty well equipped for such a small, lightweight trailer. We have a fair amount of counter space. That's accomplished by giving us the sink cover here. If we pull that up, we reveal a nice big single basin stainless steel sink. It's got a high faucet, so that makes getting pots and pans under it fairly easy. That is next to our double burner stovetop. And below that, we have a microwave. Kitchen storage, again, not super ample, but it's there. We have a couple of drawers, nice big open shelf space there. And then up above, we have two nice big cabinets that open up. I can see personally, if I own this, putting in some kind of divider shelf there, just to really open it up and give myself a little more space. This is equipped with a Furion 12 volt refrigerator. Decent size, lots of freezer space. And because it's the 12 volt, it doesn't have the cooling fins in the back. So that does give it a little more volume. The bunks, now these are only 28 inches wide. They're not super wide. They're about 74 inches long. So again, if you're up over six feet, this is tough to sleep in without being scrunched up. But it's doable, especially for little kids. Behind me, we have the bathroom. 
The bathroom is actually quite spacious in this unit, in my opinion. It's got a skylight up above. We have a little corner stainless steel sink here with a nice high faucet. It's easy to get up under that sticks out plenty far. A little mirror on the wall just to help you get ready. Some storage down below that sink. A foot flush toilet. And then our shower. So again, I'll do that six foot three thing, guys. I'm in the skylight of this shower. My elbows, they definitely touch both sides. So there's room. So with the curtain closed, you know, you're going to have space, but it's tight. But this is a small trailer, and that's kind of what I expect out of that. Overall, I'd say that this has a lot of redeeming qualities. So if you're a weekend warrior and you're doing short trips where you don't need to store a whole lot of stuff, just a few kids things, the clothes, you know, not a whole lot of eating things, not a whole lot of dry goods. I can't see being super comfortable in this for over a week long trip, but hey, everybody's different. Everybody's uses are different. You can check this thing out for yourself in person here at Southern RV in McDonough, Georgia. And we've got it online at southernrv.com. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the tour. And until next time, happy camping.